Good morning, boys and girls. I, uh, before I read you the story called The Trojan Horse, another story, second graders from in third graders, our wonderful intermediate section. <laughs> and the book is all beat up, as you can tell. We need to buy us a new one of these. But first, I want to show you something. See Mr. Dragon over there? All right, he's scheduled for surgery this week, so you pray for Mr. Dragon. I showed the boys and girls in kindergarten when I read them Zeke the Caterpillar, but you may not have watched that video because that was a little bit younger than you that are going to listen to the Trojan Horse, but I'm going to show you what Mr. Eau found in the yard. These, you know what kind of eggs those are? Uh-huh, robins. Robins, eggs are always light blue. Let me put it on the counter so you can see it a little better. These were just lying in the grass, Mr. Eau Claire said. This one is broken. Nothing inside. Let me turn it around so you can see. Just a little bit of yolk in there. See the yolk? The yolk is the food for the little baby while it's inside of the egg. This one is whole. It's a teeny bit heavy. They're so little. So that means there's a baby bird inside of that one, but the mother has to keep it warm and with it not being in the nest. And uh, I'm sure that one has died too. But you boys and girls, get outside. Go for some walks in the yard. Look for caterpillars. Look for, look for robin eggs. And see what all you can see, what else is going on out there. All right. The Trojan Horse, How the Greeks Won the War. Now, this is about Greece is in the Mediterranean Ocean. It's across the, uh, across the waterway from Italy. Most of you know where Italy is. With It looks like the boot, doesn't it? But this story takes place, it says, 3,000 years ago in the land now called Turkey. Um, a shepherd stands above a grassy field watching his sheep. To the west, the sea sparkles in the sunlight. To the east, the dusty plains stir in the wind. About four miles from the sea, there is a great stone wall built on a hill. Inside the wall, there is a rich, proud kingdom. It is the ancient kingdom of Troy. The wall around Troy is there to protect the city. It is made of stone that men cut and fit together. In some places, it's very high and very thick. The lower part of the wall is covered with limestone. The limestone makes the wall slippery. Climbing up the hill is climbing up the wall is impossible. So if, when the enemy tries to come, they can't climb up this wall. At the top of the wall, there are places where the Trojan bowmen can stand. Here, they pull back their bowstrings and let their arrows fly. So going over the wall is impossible, too. Another way. There is only one way into Troy, through the great double gate. Shepherds go through with their bundles of wool. Plowmen go through with their carts full of vegetables. Traders go through with their treasures of gold, silver, and bronze. Gatekeepers guide the gate, guard the gate day and night. If a hostile enemy is coming across the plain, they close the gate and push in the bolts. Behind the bolted gate, behind the stone wall, Troy is safe. Troy is a very important city, and King Priam, the king of Troy, is a very powerful ruler. Now, here's Troy, here's the Aegean Sea, and over here is Greece. Priam has many allies or friends. He rules the land and sea for miles around, but King Priam is not content. He wants to be more powerful than the Greeks who live across the Aegean Sea. The Greeks speak the same language as the Trojans, and they believe in the same gods as the Trojans. And if you see the same gods, now this is 3,000 years ago, that's a little g. Paul, on his missionary journeys, does go to Greece and tells them about the unknown God. So that was our God that they didn't know about. Paul had lots of people saved on his missionary journey. The land where the Greeks live is hilly and rocky. They cannot grow enough wheat. They must sail to Asia to buy more. But to get to Asia, the Greeks must pass through a narrow channel that connects the 
a GNC with the Black Sea. So here they have to come up here and sail. But what's right there? Troy. So King Priam takes advantage of this. When a Greek ship full of cargo sails past, the Trojans stop it. They demand a toll. If the Greeks want to go by, they must pay. Cargo ships are big and heavy. They are not made to go fast like warships. They have to pay tolls with bags of wheat, jars of oil, bars of gold. The Greeks are furious. Why should they have to pay to use the channel? The sea is free. If the Trojan keep, keep this up, there's going to be war. King Priam is not afraid. There is a great stone wall about his city. No one, not even a Greek army, can get into Troy. Chapter 2 is called War. In the Greek kingdom of Sparta, and Sparta was down at the southern part down here, Sparta. Uh, King uh, Menelaus paces the floor and plans his revenge. Something terrible has happened. The Trojans have captured his wife, Helen. They have taken her to Troy, so they came and captured her. Helen, she is the most beautiful woman in the world. Now she will be forced to marry Paris, Prince of Troy. Menelaus plans to go to Troy with his army, but he cannot fight alone. The Trojans and their allies outnumber the Spartans. Menelaus summons a runner. He gives him a message to take to his brother. So his brother is also a king, Agamemnon. In the Greek kingdom of Menesia, King Agamemnon sits and listens. A runner has brought him a message. The Trojans have taken Helen. Troy, that city, has been pirating Greek ships for years. That kidnapping is the last straw. So the armies all band together. They were ready for war anyway, and the capture of Helen just made them ready for war some more. They go to the temple to pray. Now they're praying to their god. And this one is a goddess. That means a lady god. And she's the goddess of wisdom. Of course, she can't hear, can she? She is just a statue. And they give her a, a, a bull so that she will answer their prayers. But she can't even hear them, can she? In the Greek kingdom of Ithaca, the king's son, uh, Odysseus, is saying goodbye to his wife and son. He is going to Troy. Their Greek armies are banding together to fight the Trojans, and they need a strong, shrewd leader like Odysseus. The warships are loaded. Everything is on board. Armor, weapons, chariots, food, even horses are on their boats. The sail is up. The oarsmen are ready to row. Odysseus stays a minute longer. His son is just a baby. He promises to return as soon as he can. As the Greeks sail to Troy, the Trojan scout bring news to Priam. The Greeks are coming. Priam goes to the temple to pray. He bows before the sacred statue of Athena, the goddess. He asks her for help. His men give a giant ram the feet of the statue. If she likes this gift, she will side with the Trojans. So both countries have given their goddess statue a bull to help them fight. In the palace... In that God of Statue can't do anything, can it? In the palace nearby, Helen sits by a window and watches the sea. The jewels in her gold crown sparkle in the sunlight. Suddenly, she sees something on the horizon. A ship, two ships, more ships than she could count. See them at the window? The Greeks are coming. The Greeks land on the sandy beach near Troy. Odysseus leads, leads his army east. Horses, chariots, and all. The bowmen go on foot with their bows and arrows. The spearmen walk behind side by side with their shields and long spears. The bravest, most skilled warriors ride in the chariots. Their swords dangle at their sides. The Greek army is ready for battle. The Trojan gates open. The men of Troy come out. They are ready for battle too. King Priam leads his army across the plain. Horses, chariots, and all. Now, here they are. They fight, and many are wounded and killed, but nobody really wins. The, the armies are very well matched, and the Trojans go back to their cities. The Greeks go back to the shores and build the camp. The fighting continues, listen to this, day after day, week after week, month after month. They are both equally skilled 
and no one can win the war. Odysseus realizes there is only one way for, to defeat the Greeks, the Greeks to defeat Troy. They must get inside. But how? Ten years go by. These two armies are fighting for ten years. And neither one of them can win. The Greeks are tired. Tired of fighting. Tired of living in huts. Tired of being away from home. Odysseus men sit by the campfire and argue. Some want to return to Greece. Others refuse to surrender. The men say the Greeks must give Athena a bigger gift. So the gods didn't help them. Uh, so she can side with them. Odysseus looks out to sea. He notices the ships floating in the water. No one builds ships as well as the Greeks. The Greeks can build anything. Suddenly, Odysseus thinks of a way to get inside Troy, a way to win the war. It is an extraordinary plan. Odysseus tells Agamemnon about his idea, his brother. The plan is dangerous. If it fails, many Greeks will be killed, but if it succeeds, Troy will fall. Agamemnon agrees to take the risk, so do the other kings. Some ships are sent to the nearest Greek islands. There, the men cut down many trees and put them on board. When the ships return with their cargo, Odysseus tells his best carpenters what to do. The men cut the trees into logs and planks and strips. They build a giant wooden frame. It is very tall, perhaps even taller than the Trojan Wall. The men weave strips of wood around and through a frame. The construction, look at it. What does it look like? It looks like a giant horse. The horse is hollow. Now, this plan was ingenious. There is a door on the side, which is big enough for men to crawl through. So there they are. See how tall it is? They have to have scaffolding to get all the way up there. There they are. When the horse is finished, Odysseus and his men go up a rope and drop down in the belly of the horse. The men are wearing their armor. They're carrying their weapons. When the horse is full of men, the door on the side is closed. The rest of the Greeks board the ships and sail away. They take with them their food, their horses, their chariots. Only one man stays behind. His name is Sinon. He goes and hides in the grass by the river. There is an island not far from the shore. The Greek ships sail past the island and stop on the other side, out of sight. The island is deserted. So the Greeks are hiding around the corner... And inside the horse are their soldiers. A lookout goes ashore. He climbs up the top of the hill, but from where he can see, from there he can see the wall around Troy. A plowman runs along the old cart road toward the Trojan Gate. He is shouting wonderful news. The Greeks are gone. Soon the great double gate is open, and the people of Troy come crowding out. The war is over. Ten years. The Trojan people walk all the way down to the Greek camp. They want to see the empty huts. They want to see the deserted stables. But the Trojans cannot believe their eyes. There stands a giant wooden horse. What can it be? Why did the Greeks leave it in their camp? The crowd around the horse grows bigger and bigger. The Trojans are suspicious. Everyone is talking at once. Inside the horse's wooden belly, the Greeks can hear what the Trojans are saying. Burn the Greek horse. Chop it to pieces. Push it in the sea. Oh, if they do that, the soldiers are inside, aren't they? King Priam arrives. He, too, is suspicious. He tells his men to examine the horse. Suddenly, there is shouting from the river. The Trojan scouts have found something. Someone. It's a man. A Greek. They found him hiding in the grass. Now, Sinon was, um, he was their plant. He's doing what they've told him to do. Sinon is brought before the king. The people want to kill him. He's a Greek. But King Priam stops them. Here is someone who can tell them what the horse means. He demands an explanation. 
Every eye is on Sinon as he speaks. He tells the king that he ran away from the Greeks. They were about to kill him for disobeying orders. Sinon lies and before and everyone believes him. But what about the horse? Sinon says that the wooden horse is a gift for Athena. Now Athena, the, their god, goddess, lady god, will give the Greeks a safe trip home. So they're going home and they want their god to bless them. But King Priam is worried. If the Trojans destroy the horse, their god Athena will be angry. So he commands his men to do just what Odysseus hoped, to bring the horse inside to Athena instead. The Trojans place a giant slab of rock under the horse. They place logs with wheels under the slab. They throw ropes around the horse's neck. It takes many men and many oxen to drag the giant horse across the old battlefield all the way to Troy. As the horse rolls along, the Greeks inside bump against each other. Their weapons and armor clatter together, but no one hears them. <coughs> Outside, there is too much cheering. <coughs> Excuse me. At the Trojan gate, there's trouble. The horse is too big. The Trojans have to tear down many stones at the gate to make way for the horse. The Trojan people shout, Let the horse come into the city. The wooden horse goes through the big double gate. At last, the Greeks are inside Troy. So they're hiding inside that horse, but the Trojans don't know that. The horse is pulled along the streets, past the marketplace, past the houses, past the palace, all the way to the temple of Athena. Now there is great, great festival in Athena's honor because she has given them victory over the war. Everyone in Troy celebrates. They sing and dance in the street. They drink and feast far into the night. They burn incense in the temple and chant their special prayers to her. They thank her for ending the war, all but one. The young priestess named Cassandra is troubled. She walks like a phantom and she's crying, Doom is near, doom is near, but no one pays attention. The night sky is full of stars. And here's, the, here's the legs of the horse. Everyone is full of food and wine. Everyone except the Greek warriors inside the Trojan horse. A crack appears in the side of the horse. A door is opened. A rope is dropped. Down the rope come Odysseus and his men. Some go to the top of the wall. They kill the guards. One Greek lights a torch. Far away on an island, a lookout sees the signal. The Greek ships sail back to Troy. The men cross the plain in the dark of night. They enter Troy at the gate through the hole that the Trojans made. Suddenly they're shouting. The Greeks run through the streets, carrying torches. They set fires everywhere. The people wake up. Their houses are full of smoke. They run outside to see what is happening. The Trojan warriors wake up too. They are sleepy from too much food and wine. They stumble about looking for their swords. In the palace, King Priam wakes up. The guards are shouting the news outside the chamber door. The Greeks are inside the city. Now, <clears throat> Priam knows the truth. Troy has been tricked. Troy burns. Everything that is not made of stone goes up in flames. The heat is intense. There is not enough water in all of Troy to put out even one blaze. Some of the Trojans run out of the city. They escape by land and by sea, but many die in the fire. The fire burns for three days. When it is out, the rich, proud kingdom of Troy is gone. After the fall of Troy, the Greeks go home. Menelaus takes Helen back to Sparta. He's gotten his queen back. Agamemnon returns uh, to Mycenae. But clever Odysseus is not so lucky. He is captured on the way home, and it takes him ten more years to get back to Ithaca, back to his wife and his son. Many years go by. The ruins of Troy lie inside the great stone wall. The winds blow, the dust 
across the plains and across the ruin. The stones are buried in the dust. It is now seven in the 700s BC, about 400 years after the Trojan War. So if this is accurate, then it was about 1100 years BC. That means before Jesus came when this war happened. A Greek poet named Homer decides to write down the stories he has heard about the Trojan War. There are so many, and everyone in Greece loves to hear them. In his long poem, Homer tells about the heroes of the war, Odysseus, Agamemnon, uh, Menelaus, and many others. He describes the battles on the plains outside of Troy. He writes about Helen and the goddess Athena, his long poem, and this would be an epic poem, fifth graders, like Beowulf was, the big long story poem. It's many, 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 many pages. More than 2,000 years later, a German archaeologist named Heinrich Sliman reads the Iliad. It is the oldest piece of Greek writing that still exists. By now, all traces of Troy has disappeared. Many people think Homer made up the story, but Sliman believes that there really is a city called Troy, and he decides to find it. He goes to Turkey. From clues in the Iliad, he locates the hill where Troy was probably built. To the west, the sea sparkles in the sunlight. To the east, the dusty plains stir up the wind. In 1870, now we're talking a long, long time from the Trojan and the Greeks' war. He begins digging. Many people laugh at him, but Slim, Sliman believes he will find Troy. And he does. He believes in himself, third graders, just like uh, Louis Pasteur did. He not only discovers the Great Stone Wall, he finds many other things too. Treasures of silver and gold and bronze. He finds human skeletons and the bones of horses. He finds a gold crown. Troy did exist. The war that Homer spoke about was real. But there are many things that Sliman, Sliman does not find. The Statue of Athena, the chariots, the wooden horse. These things are gone forever. Uh, remember um, Pompeii and the archaeologists went in and dug down and they found the city of Pompeii, didn't they? But the story of the wooden horse handed down for 3,000 years remains. Now, here's the pronunciation guide that I probably didn't pronounce all the words very accurately. No one knows the whole story of the Trojan War. This book is based on the legends or the stories that people keep repeating, of Homer and Virgil, as well as on accounts by modern historians. So Homer and Virgil were the ones that wrote stories about them and about the, um, the Trojan horse. Now, today, people will talk about a Trojan horse. Now, see, there's the horse, but it was not a gift to the gods. It was their way to get in the city. The soldiers are hiding inside. So today, when somebody says, oh, that is a Trojan horse, that means there was another reason for that particular thing to happen than what it looks like, because it was not at all what the Trojans thought it was. And they got their queen back, didn't they? Don't mess with the king and his queen. Have a wonderful day, boys and girls.